In the grim dark future, you probably don't always have to be grim or dark all the time. I wonder if space marines still laugh at fart jokes. I am I am Biggest sad sack in 40k got an update, and he's Primaris now. It was something about a Rubik's Cube and crossing a Comic Con. When I knew the new Dante model was on the way, uh, painting it in all true metallic seemed a little bit boring. No offense if that's how you did it. And painting that much non-metallic metal was honestly pretty scary. So I came up with a few options and put them on a YouTube poll and let you guys decide. And holy shit did Synthwave get some love. Starting with a black primer, I push Royal Purple by Vallejo as a base because it's a killer color to shadow out some blues and to start building towards a magenta. I'm using an airbrush, but if you don't have one, you can get similar results with rattle cans or even dry brushing. If you want me to show you, just leave a comment below. After that, using a fairly steep angle, I essentially zenithold Vallejo's medium blue from above. I wanted to push the contrast early because I wanted to keep as much of the purple in the shadows and the black in the deepest recesses as I can to keep that visual interest. Now things get interesting. Let's take magenta and spray it from the complete opposite direction. This is going to give it an underglow effect, which is kind of dope. The idea here is to substitute anything that is originally metallic with a mix of blue and magenta. From here, I jumped in to all the crest details with a base coat of Vallejo Blue Green. Because Synthwave is supposed to be an explosion of saturation and bold bright colours, this is as dark as it's going to get. But to make the magenta really pop, I'm going to desaturate the green blue by mixing a little bit of white star from two thin coats. Since our darkest colour isn't all that dark, I focus the blue green and white scar mix to about 50%, leaving the green blue in the recesses. From here, I added just a little bit more white scar and picked out even less details. Again, about 50%, so 25% of the total surface area, because that's how math works. You'll notice that I've left some of the magenta in the deepest recesses of some parts, and that's to try and keep the shadow and to try and deepen the contrast without adding any new colors or even just adding black. And definitely not just because I'm a bad painter and I missed it. And now a word from this week's sponsor. Emperor has been one of the largest games workshop retailers in Australia for quite a few years. With everything from paints to hobby supplies and all the systems that we love, including Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigma and Horus Heresy, and the prices are insane. Some things are up to 30% off of the recommended retail price. Emperor is also one of the biggest supporters of the Australian wargaming scene, sponsoring things like events and tournaments and even creators like myself. The best way to support our hobby is to support the people that support us. And that's Emperor. Link in the description. And now back to the video. After this, I used two thin coats of Doom Death Black to block in all of those weird things between the armor joints. I always thought they were rubber, but then people yell at me on the internet saying that it's definitely not rubber. After the Doom Death Black, I layered Vallejo Deep Sea Green to bring out a slightly more interesting hue instead of just going with a neutral grey. And since magenta is a colour made by science and has zero green in it, the green really works as an awesome combo. Then I added a touch of Vallejo Pale Grey Blue for the brightest most highlights. For the cloth and purity seals, I took the Vallejo blue green and mixed it right back with pale grey blue. I wanted a similar colour but not the exact same as the crest details, but I also didn't want to introduce any new colours, especially creamy warm tones like we'd usually expect to see. After that I picked out the raised folds with the same mix with only a touch of the blue green. and then the most raised areas with a very thin down, pure pale blue-gray. Now to highlight the armor. Even though we have magenta looking like an OSL effect, that's not really what I'm pushing for. What I want is a more color shift feel. So I'm highlighting as if the light source is coming from one direction, not the band. 
Now using Vallejo Pink to mix with that same magenta to pick out the higher spots of where the light would hit directly. Places like the knee and the top corners of those washboard abs. Then using Elysium Blue from Two Thin Coats, I picked out only a handful of edges. Remember, you don't have to edge highlight every edge. Just pick out the ones that you feel would actually add to the model instead of doing everything. Doing everything will potentially land you a free stay in Arkham Asylum. Here's where things start to pop. For the axe, I covered the big hefty sharp bits. I don't know what it's called and blade doesn't feel right. In White Star. After that, I brush on a thin layer of Imperial Fist Contrast and hot damn that's bright. After that, I glaze in a few layers of Rust Orange. After that, I added magenta to the very bottom and feathered the transition. This makes it really look like I know what I'm doing. And now it's time for the big reveal. Warlord Titan! No, 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 no. Just don't. If this synthwave scheme is something that you try, or something you've already tried and it's better than mine, uh, I'd love to see it. There's a link in the description down below for the Heresy for Heretics Discord server. If you've made it this far in the video, I honestly can't say thank you enough. Uh, and another massive thank you to our sponsor, Emperor. So, I don't usually have a fancy outro slogan like Miniac and Ninjon. So, just keep pushing pigments, baby.